Welcome back to the Charismatic Voice. Today we are returning to Angelina Jordan, a wonderful young singer who has been wowing audiences since she was eight years old. And even recently, she's continued to wow them. It was in 2020 in the America's Got Talent Champion Edition that she had a wonderful cover of Bohemian Rhapsody. And we've done quite a few videos on the channel so far. I really appreciate getting to watch how she has evolved. I think she's developing into an even more brilliant and mature artist. I'm very excited to continue to watch where she goes. And recently she's been releasing things that are her own writing and also a lot of covers on YouTube. So we're gonna be taking a look at a cover she recently did from Adele, This Is All I Ask. Now, this song was written by Adele and Bruno Mars together. I think that's super cool. It was like a piano ballad. And basically it's just super, super sappy about a breakup. But there was one really cool thing that Adele said that I wanted to read. She said, I've never, I've never sung so hard in my whole life. Can you imagine the fun me and Bruno had making that? So with that in mind, let's hear how Angelina covers it. gonna go back here in just a bit. I love the way she is using air. I feel like this is just a really beautiful um, method of uh, giving more air or taking it away. Uh, and it's not just the airflow because that has to remain continuous when you're singing, right? The air has to continue to go out for you to continue to make sound. But she adds more air, like um, uh, airy quality to the sound in addition. Sometimes this is when the vocal folds have a little more efficiency when they're coming together then you hear like a more sort of condensed sound and other times it sounds like she really lets a little more of the air without necessarily the phonation on top of it come through as an extra additional layer to that timbre. It's beautiful. Um, and I'll just go through uh, and pause it a few moments here and point out, uh, let's go here maybe, uh, the way that she is consistently it's like she's like surfing air the whole time um but then i want to point out like where she's um bringing it a little more narrow versus sort of opening up more to have more airy sound it's really good like that camera i will leave my heart at the door i won't say a word They've all been said before, you know, so I don't wait. So when she goes out into her lowest notes here, you hear, I hear even more air happening down there. And this is really good. When you go down really low, some people think that they need to press to get the sound out and they'll go like, uh, and try and get a low, low sound out by almost forcing it out. She does the right thing, which is she expands the tube and sends air. Low notes actually need more air than high notes do. So instead of going, uh, uh, as you go down and trying to press and like crinkle it, go like, uh, and you expand the tube that way instead, like a feeling of expansion here, maybe even at the collarbones, um, that can let a lot more air continue to flow through and give a uh, feed those low notes a little bit more air. So as you hear it go down to the lowest ones, notice how it's almost like got just like a more warm, pillowy, fluffy sound to it. No, I won't say a word. They've all been said before, you know, so I don't wait. Yeah. Just pay pretend. I love the way when she went off with pretend, she actually had like a little extra air that it almost cascaded over the sound as well. 
They've all been said before, you know. So I don't wait. Just pay pretend. Mm. Like we're not scared of what's coming next. We're scared of having nothing left but don't. And right there is when she started to. Um, have a little more closure in the sound, so a little less airiness kind of coming through. Um, and it's like, she's got a, a, it seems like she's got a really refined dial for how much airiness she wants in the tone. I'm scared of having nothing left but don't, don't give me wrong enough. So that was a beautiful phrase. She starts it off with a little more, um, a little more uh, condensed sound. And then at the end, she really backs off of that to show us like, oh, I can float back to it at any point that I want to. It's beautiful, very expressive. Next, we're scared of having nothing left but don't, don't give me wrong enough. There is no tomorrow. I ask She possesses amazing star quality, the kind that uh, I think is going to continue to grow and really hit hard in mainstream as well. Uh, I hear a buzz in her sound that reminds me of obviously Adele and Rihanna. She's got a lot of power there, but then she has the soul to go with it. She's got a lot of depth in her timbre. Like she's able to go down to those low notes already. And she's not that old. Women's voices, as we get older, they're going to go down in pitch. Um, but she's not old enough to really have reached a point where she's getting a lot of extension down there yet, which it's going to be exciting to hear what happens when her voice does that. But then... In addition, I just think that she is so classy. You even look at how she's dressing um, and she has a really good story that she came from about not wearing shoes on stage and how she befriended a girl. Um, I think when she was six, who didn't own shoes. And so she's had this like amazing moral story to go along with all the time as well. And I think, okay, um, like not only does she have the voice to go with it, but she has the moral impetus, the desire to storytell and create something bigger than herself. And then she also uh, just seems to have such a hard working attitude about everything. And she's not out there to, I don't see her sexualizing herself in any way. I just see her being so classy, so well put together. And uh, definitely I'm, I'm seeing it just this continual regular release of material she can't help but become a superstar with these kinds of qualities it's pretty impressive i'm going to come back a little bit more here and talk about some of the details in these phrases but um overall experience for me was they're just really touching and really well crafted oh, oh. So uh, there's a lot of sustained belting here. And we know that Adele has gotten into trouble with um, these kinds of sustained high belting before. I'm very excited though about her technique. She does not seem to be holding a lot of tension in her face, seems pretty relaxed. Her throat as well seems fairly relaxed, um, just really open, which is great. And she's very much breathing and 
generating the power from her sound in the center of her body. Sometimes you see like this whole like, and you see a little, uh, like a little bit of shoulder rage, but it's not, it's not a shoulder raise that is um, separated from diaphragm or thoracic breathing. Um, you know, sometimes we talk about breathing um, for humans in general in, in the sense of tidal volume, like tidal being like how much flow do you have in and out of air? And most humans, uh, before they've had any sort of breath training, they breathe kind of around their clavicles, which is like just this tiny bit of air that really only fills up the very top portion of your lung cavity. And then you have uh, down further, you have like a thoracic expansion essentially where your external and internal intercostals are the main ones that are helping with the breath there. And uh, it's a very good idea when you do that to expand and try to stay expanded so that your breath isn't just like whoosh out and suddenly smack against your vocal folds. Um, but even, uh, I think it even more effective than that is to also really use diaphragmatic, um, like even below your diaphragm, get into uh, abdominal and pelvic floor muscles to help sustain a low sense of breathing that helps root. It helps keep the diaphragm low, essentially, as you breathe out, so that, again, that lung cavity doesn't just collapse and send all of the air up. So um, she seems to be doing um, like a nice, really full, complete breath that is making use of all that lung cavity space, so both like a combination of thoracic and uh, diaphragmatic abdominal um, support with her breath. Let's go back just a little bit. Take me back. There's another really good thing in her breathing here that I want to point out, and that's that she doesn't take the breath and then hold it. She takes the breath and dives right in. If you take a breath and you go and hold and then restart the sound, you have to reopen your glottis to get the sound going. And it can be a little sort of explosive in nature. She just takes the breath and goes, ah, and goes right into the sound. It's very good. Um, let's go back here. Beautiful in and out of breath. It's already in your eyes And I'm sure my eyes, they speak for me No one knows me like you do And since you're the only one that matters Tell me who do I do Look at me Nice, nice run, execution of it. I uh, was appreciating some of the creaks that she was adding in for style, this like, uh, kind of sound. I like, um, I like that sound. It's, uh, it feels really human, that it's noises beyond the singing. It feels expressive to me. It feels very natural to me. I also love this line. Um, I don't need your honesty. It's already in your eyes. I, that's just a fantastic line and I wouldn't have expected any less from Adele and Bruno. Uh, but uh, back to what Angelina is doing here. Uh, it's very awesome to see how she plays with vowels to help make her runs even more clear. Doing a run all on the same pure vowel, um, that, is, that is definitely a technical feat. And it's definitely something you hear in classical music quite often. But in a lot of contemporary music right now, we hear uh, even more depth defined and clear runs because people are shifting their vowels. We don't really care as much about that purity of vowel. We think more about like, well, what were exactly those notes? And when we have the vowel shifting in addition to the pitch, it signals our ear that there's another thing that's happening. Uh, it's very good use. So watch her mouth in these runs. Me like you do 
No, it this can't be the end yet. Ah, I, I feel like songs just need to be longer. Um, yes, definitely hashtag spoiled by metal. I wish that Angelina's songs were like seven to ten minutes regularly. Um, but I was gonna pause anyhow and talk about how gutsy of a decision it is to cover Adele. If you're going to cover one of the greats, if you're gonna cover Mariah Carey, Whitney Houston, Adele, Beyonce, um, you have to bring it and you have to be so good already and then be able to add something of your own because otherwise we would just go listen to Adele. <laughs> and I feel so very strongly that Angelina is able to bring her authenticity to it in addition to fantastic vocal technique. I love hearing the lines. And I love the way that her runs are a continuation of the line. It doesn't feel like it's something that's divided. It feels like it's one entire idea based in emotion. It's very good. Let's go back a little bit. Oh, maybe. Overall, I loved the simplicity of this setting. I thought it was beautiful to just have a couple of mics, just a piano, just a voice. I like that sort of stripped down performance a lot. Um, I loved the flow between the two of them. It felt very good, very much in sync. And I enjoyed uh, just like the intimacy of the setting. You know, it really feels like she's singing close to your ear. I think it's a beautiful way to do a cover that feels very real and very authentic. And that's something that I've come to expect of Angelina is that when she puts her mind to making a song, it is going to be very authentic, uh, a song or a cover. Whatever it is, she's going to put a stamp on it that feels like it is truly her. I think more and more that part of what is truly her is just amazing breath technique. Both the taking of breath and the using of breath. And she uses it in so many different ways. She's very, very smart about just playing with air and using it as an extension of emotional expression. It's delightful. I wanna say thank you to everyone has, who has been requesting another Angelina video. I absolutely love getting to hear her. So thank you so much for your suggestions. Please continue to make suggestions down below in the comments of this YouTube video. That's where we look for them and track them. And you can also find us here every Monday, Tuesday, and Friday at 8 a.m. Arizona time. That's when we do premieres and there's a live chat during that time, which is super fun. And if you just really dig this channel, I suggest checking out our merch. We just released it. It's pretty awesome. And you can find a banner about that below this video as well. If you want to learn more about singing or music in general, you can find courses for that at thecharismaticvoice.com. And if you just want to hang out and play video games and have lots of talks about life or about uh, YouTube strategy, these kinds of things, 
uh, we have a really awesome Patreon community and we hang out with them a lot. So come join us on Patreon. I'll see you somewhere soon.